Go ahead, Ms. Moyer. All right. Chair Nose, Vice Chairs Goodwin and Nelson, for the record, my name is Megan Moyer. I'm the Public Policy Director at Disability Rights Oregon. And I'd like to start this conversation with what quality is not. Um, first, quality is not research based on how effective a treatment was in improving somebody's quality of life. It is not research that says, oh, my, my pain went, went away, I have increased mobility, I personally, because of this treatment, am living a higher quality of life. That type of research is incredibly valuable in making determinations if it should be something that our health care plans cover. That's not what quality is. What quality is, is the health economics matrix that looks at two factors. One is, how many years does the treatment extend a person's life? <coughs> that is pretty quantitative. You can measure how many years a treatment added to somebody's life expectancy. The second is the crux of our opposition. It is based on a general population survey that asks the public, what do you think the quality of life of somebody with this diagnosis is? It has absolutely nothing to do with what people with that diagnosis think of their own quality of life. It has nothing to do with anything other than the general population's bias about disability. Here is a real example in quality, which is that a person with autism spectrum disorder, all people with autism spectrum disorder, does not matter severity. This is a generalized score, are worth 0.3 of a person, meaning any treatment that would extend the life of a person who has autism spectrum disorder, let's say it increased their life expectancy by 10, will then have that score multiplied by 0.3 because they're only worth 30% of a person. That is incredibly offensive to the disability and chronic disease community. Our own research shows that people with disabilities and chronic disease measure our quality of life equivalent to people who don't experience chronic disease or disability. This is not a tool that is based on science. It has no scientific value whatsoever, and yet it has been part of the Oregon Health Plan since its inception. In fact, when Oregon initially uh, applied to create the Oregon Health Plan back in 1992, we were rejected for the fe by the federal government from creating the Oregon Health Plan because we specifically said we would use quality as how we would create the prioritized list. So Oregon went back and created its own formula, but quality was part of that. We have started moving away. In fact, the inception of the Health Evidence Review Committee was a step away from quality. It brought in many more factors to consider. And when staff makes recommendations, quality is no longer the primary tool that they use to make these considerations. We are now at a place where we don't need quality to be able to make sound recommendations to the Health Evidence Review Commission. Staff have the tools they need. On the record, you will see a report from the National Council on Disability about quality, where they specifically call out other health economics matrix tools that can be used instead of quality that provide this information in an unbiased way. This is no longer needed in Oregon. I am proud of the work that we've been doing with the health authorities, Senator Patterson and Senator Gelsler. I think that we have reached a point where we can put this in our past and yet still be able to make sound scientifically based choices about how we prioritize health care. It's not easy to make these decisions. It is hard to say there are conditions we do not cover. This bill does not say we will cover all conditions. It does not say we will cover more conditions. It simply says that the criteria that we use to decide what conditions are and, and are not covered are actually based on science and not bias. That is what this bill is about. I highly encourage your yes vote. I'm really proud that we can come today with language that we all feel can work and bring Oregon forward. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, okay, two questions. Representative Javity and then Representative Deal. Thank you, Chair. Uh, a couple questions popped up. Um, let's see. So this matrix says the number of years of life extended, and then you said that's a general population survey of what the quality of life of someone 
who has a certain disorder, whether or not that person who's answering the survey has that disorder. So I'm Correct. assuming they, that if someone had they don't. autism, I would be like, well, someone with autism is... Does the... I guess what I'm, uh, uh, what I'd like to say, thanks for clarifying that. Then, um, does that survey say what do you think the quality of life is of somebody who has asthma? Yes. Or is it more specific with teasing out questions like, uh, you know, does it get into more details or is it just <clears throat> quality of life undefined? Yeah, it is not related to the treatment that that person would, sure. would receive. So it is literally asking the general public about. What do you think the quality of somebody with MS is? Yeah. On a scale of one to 10. What do you think? They may have never heard of MS. No. And they may answer, I don't know. But, um, but it is, has no relationship to what a treatment is wow. Wow. at all. Follow up on that? Sure. Sure. So, granted, these are great examples of where it doesn't work. Are there instances where quality <clears throat> does work well? No, I believe it has absolutely no scientific value. It is not replicatable. I don't believe it ever reached the standards that we apply to other research that the health authority has used. Because we do expect when we use research to make decisions that it be peer reviewed and that, be, it, that those results can be replicatable. You can't replicate. This is a private company that creates this scoring tool. It's called ICER. Their surveys are totally written by them. You, you could never reproduce this. So uh, to me, I question how it ever had a place. But um, no, I do not believe it has any scientific value whatsoever. And committee, just so you know, there's nobody signed up in opposition to this bill, just, just so you know. So if you're looking for the counterpoint to this, I could find it. it's not coming. They're not showing up. Hmm. Representative Deal. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for testimony here um, so will we'll, you mentioned when you were talking about quality that that how long uh, the life would be extended now that would still is that still a criteria okay how about how's the age of the recipient is that is that still part of the criteria that's still considered it, quality by using that number of years you extend life could have a discriminatory impact on treatments for older adults. Yeah. Um, so, so I'll acknowledge that. I'll also acknowledge other research uses very similar comparisons because your overall life expectancy is shorter. You're going to s probably find smaller time amounts sure. that you're gaining. Those will still be used after this bill passes. It's just that quality score that you're talking about related to. Correct. So this is yeah. about any score that does a quality in general measurement, which, again, Thank is you. not an individual's self-identified yeah. quality. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Representative mm -hmm. Yucker. Thank you, Chair. Did you have a question? To do? Uh, my question is because I'm very... <clears throat> I have no idea pretty much what you're talking about. I'm just going to be honest with you, but how many other states do this? I just want to know that. <laughs> like, are we the only state that does this? Or is there more states that do this? Use quality? Yeah, use quality and stuff. Other states use quality. Oregon has used it in a unique way. Other states um, and, and private insurance and others have used quality a lot of times in their prescription drug formularies. Mm -hmm. We do not in Oregon. Uh, well, we don't on the Prescription Drug Affordability Board. Prescription drugs are part of the of the um, prioritized list. But um, because Oregon got a waiver from Medicaid back in 1992, we don't cover all the conditions required by a traditional Medicaid program. We, cre we made a trade off. Mm. We said we're going to cover more lives and in exchange, we will cover less conditions. Many states don't have a waiver and they operate a traditional Medicaid pro program and so they will cover everything that traditional Medicaid says that they have to cover. We chose to expand and therefore have a prioritized list. We are the only state that use quality in creating that prioritized list. So we kind of have a unique 
relationship with this measure. Kentucky actually has a law that bans the use of quali, but again, it they didn't use it in this way, and their law only relates to their prescription drug formulary. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rev. Deal, did you still have a question? Yeah, real quick, thank you, Chair. Um, Megan, what, do you know uh, a person with Down syndrome? What is their score? Chair knows, Representative Deal, I am not sure what percentage of a whole that is. And it probably depends on the thing, too, would be my guess, maybe. It doesn't. It literally has one score for all people. Or, it's they an have average. autism on one score. Wow. I'm sure. That's correct. Oh, okay. All right. 